Hello and welcome back to Gub Farm. After a long two and a half year wait, I am going to open up the Johnson Sioux bioreactor. I want the, the soil, the compost uh, for a garden bed. So it's time to strip it back and see how it turned out. The first major observation is that it should not have been left uncovered. It's just now a sea of nettles. So I'll strip them away and see if the chicken manure and wood chip has turned into compost or soil. I'm kind of interested to see to what extent has the soil broken down after 900 days. Using gloves with holes, probably not the best idea. I would have saved myself so much time if I hadn't remembered to put a cover on this. The nettles have created strong roots. So I've managed to sting my face, my arms, my hands, but it's okay. I suppose observations. First one, you're going to get about half the volume that you start with as a as a soil, and this is clearly now a nice friable um, compost. Still a lot of wood chips, so there's years of breakdown in this yet, but that can be good, I believe because it'll help feed, uh, help feed the soil. So yeah, it is very clearly broken down. But there's still plenty of wood chip in it. So when I built the bioreactor, I used plastic to stop any runoff from the manure and water and wood chip. And the idea was to capture the runoff and recycle it back in, but because it ended up being open, it caught a lot of rain, and this just became a, a watery grave for anything below, uh, one or two blocks off the ground. So next time, um, you need to have a runoff into a tank which is below um, below the level of the ground or at the level of the ground. So this tank was slightly above the ground which meant that the base of that was always wet for the last two and a half years. A tractor with the link box load of rock is about as much fun <laughs> as you're going to have. So these pipes, if you go back to the original video, I punched some holes to drain away the water, which was good because 
they kept most of the compost above the water line. But even with all that water, it's only about half full. So yeah, it didn't fill up with gunk and it was reasonably effective, so that was a win. There's a slightly putrid smell, so definitely was anaerobic. So yeah, having the plastic guard to stop runoff all the way around, including the tank, was a mistake. But look at lessons learned. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this compost, put it in the link box, bring it down to a raised garden bed that I have. I'll leave the bottom layer, it smells a bit off. And what's going on in my head is I want to see if it's any good as a growing medium. <clears throat> I think it should provide a good base to the raised garden bed, but I probably need some compost or uh, some more a lighter, more friable compost on top because it is got, it has still got a lot of wood chipped throughout it or throughout the mix. And from a bigger perspective, what I'm thinking about is is it worth the effort of doing this um, to put it around the trees versus just putting down wood chip? So I can see by applying wood chip around the trees, I am starting to suppress the grass, even the rushes. It's, it's you can see a significant reduction in grass growth um, and competition around the root of the trees. And that's a relatively straightforward process. Get some wood chip applied around the trees. And it can be done quite quickly. And at the end of the day, that wood chip is going to break down and create that fungal um, dominance that I want. So then the question is then, is it worth going to the effort of mixing it with, for example, chicken manure or cow manure to maybe get more nitrogen or try and change the characteristics of that? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I have to do more research. Spending two years having a dedicated area just devoted to a large compost mound might be a good idea, might not. I simply I don't I haven't formed an opinion yet. So if you have a viewpoint on that, is it worth creating a manure wood chip compost versus just straight wood chip around uh, trees, specifically nut trees? Love to see your comments below. Anyway, let's bring this down to the garden bed and I have a few plants that I've started that are ready to be planted on so we will plant them into the bed and see how well they grow. So I'll put some of this compost around a row of trees in top dog here and I'm going to put the rest of my garden bed and whatever's left over I will spread it around some more trees and then over the coming years we can see is there any difference in growth, not yield etc. It's only a small test but better than nothing. That job's done. I'm going to put the rest of the compost in the garden bed. The reason why I'm creating a raised bed is that slugs <laughs> destroyed my greens last year. And as you can tell, I'm a fan of Charles Dowding's work. Hi Bella. Hello, how are you? I have plenty of help today. We have John James here. What's that? Here we go. Right. Right. And here. 
Uh, you do yourself, can you lift it? Uh, <laughs> Good man, well done. A bit to my surprise, there wasn't enough compost to fill this. It's nice to see how it's broken down into a soil. So I'm just going to buy in a few bags of compost now to top this up and then let it settle for a few days and plant into it. It's been four weeks since I planted the veg and everything has done great. I can't say it was specifically the, the Johnson Sioux bioreactor soil because I had some compost that I brought in as well to top up the raised bed. And the raised bed, for, just for a point of note, um, has been great at keeping away the slugs this year because last year the veg got decimated. So look at that wraps up this video. So until next time, good luck. Yeah.